Ladies and gentlemen, our first keynote speaker. He is the co-founder and president of Calendar, a leading scheduling app that he's convinced will change how we manage and invest our time. He Rohil, he has been called a top sales speaker, virtual keynote speaker, social media speaker, and motivational guest speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Mr. John Hall, co-founder and president, calendar.com. He will be speaking on top of mind in challenging times. Very warm welcome to you, John. Thank you very much, Kathy, for that introduction. It is great to be here. So we're going to have a bunch of uh, fun. And, and also, um, really, before I, I get really rolling in this presentation, I want to go over my house rule number one. Anybody who's seen me speak, um, I'm really very big on this, and it's keeping things real. Uh, a lot of speakers, they just give a presentation, they bounce, they don't talk to people afterwards. Um, since we're doing things virtual uh, now, let, let's feel free to reach out via LinkedIn, connect. Uh, say you saw me from this event so I can connect with you um, and also follow my newsletter. Do, do different things beyond this because there's only so much a speaker can do in you know 20 to 30 minutes. And I want to help you beyond that. So hopefully you're, you're good with uh, rule number one there. So the, this top of mind speech has is, it's, it has a lot of factors that can um, that can influence how you're engaging people and how you're staying top of mind. So right now we have a temporary new normal. We don't really know what this the next year holds for us, but we do know that time is a, a major factor of how we're spending uh, time to engage people and the ROI that we're getting back. So I want to talk about the ROI of the time that we're putting in and what we can do to do things better, especially in this new digital world. So here are some of the, the key things that factor in to an ROI, ROIT. So the return on investment of our time is strategically aligning efforts, especially digitally. You want to make sure the team is on the same page that, and you're utilizing, resources, you're utilizing resources in the best way. Second, building trust and relationships has never been more important. There's a lack of trust. I, in my last year's keynote, I said, oh, I think there's going to be a massive lack of trust with the election. I did not predict what was going to happen this year. And there's even been more trust barriers that we're having to get past as marketers and as communicators. Uh, and then lastly, just specific self-awareness of how you perform, how you spend your time, where you're prioritizing and where you're focusing. So the first thing was strategic and aligning efforts. Now, uh, one of the things I used to say all the time was kill two birds with one stone. Um, I, 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 then in, in the last couple of months, I realized that killing birds, is, it just doesn't make sense throwing stones at them. So I've got a nice little picture of feeding birds with a, a scone instead here. So what I mean by that is that you, you can do a lot of things as a team member. You can say, hey, I'm going to be the leader here. I'm going to get this. I'm going to be the executor. I'm going to um, you know, be the strategist. But in reality is that the, the best like digital people are ones that understand how a team works together. And so when I mean strategic alignment, I mean, uh, this is a racy matrix, which this is taught in MBA schools. And, um, you know, it's something that I even learned back in the day when I was educating myself on just kind of advanced business tactics and things like that. But um, I, I don't necessarily say you have to use one of these, but I love the, the exercise of going through it. So if you want to email me, I can send you the or I can send it to the group. Um, the template for this. But the reason why I love these is that it, it, is that it helps you think about your job and your duties and your tasks. On the left-hand side, and it might be a little hard to read with the text, but um, on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of tasks. And then on the uh, top side, there's all these positions and the different roles. And then you have you know, who's driving this, who's responsible for this, who's accountable for it. And I like this as a mind exercise because whenever you're doing things, where whether it's like you're creating blog content or whether you are doing a PR strategy, um, it touches a variety of different people. And when we're in this virtual world and we're operating remotely, it's so important that you're including the people that what you're doing can affect. And you're also getting the feedback that's needed for you to perform in the best way. So as you can see through this document, I can go through and, and just think about it, just identify who are the people that I need to communicate in, in what way. So I want you to think about this, run through this exercise, write down the tasks that you do, write down you know who's involved, and just get yourself thinking about how you can co cohesively move together as a team. Because like in, in this new world, I'm telling you, the most effective teams are going to be the ones that get this very clear and are looking out for each other, helping each other out, and moving the ship together. 
building trust and relationships. This is something that um, I, I love talking about because I think that especially we need to be overcompensating right now with building trust. It's never been more important. I said that last year, but I had no idea what was on the horizon. But right now, people miss that that connection in a lot of different ways when you're communicating. Customers miss uh, personalization. Uh, a lot of times, I mean, I have some friends that legitimately have only seen their close friends and or close loved ones in the last six months. So we, so not just because of the professional aspect of how we're engaging people, it's also just being good human beings and getting people, um, whether you jump on a Zoom call, like if you're on a Zoom call with anybody, you should immediately bring energy, immediately create rapport. Um, you should really create uncomfortable environments uh, for people that are going to do business with you. And they also communicate that to them in a way that engages them. So... Lack of trust. This is something if you have seen Dumb and Dumber, this is an example I tell when when Jim Carrey, if, if you haven't seen the movie, Jim Carrey's character sees his best friend with his girl. And he uh, as a result of it, he felt betrayed and a lack of trust happened. So he put turbo lax so a laxative in his friend's uh, drink. Now, that's crazy. But ultimately, when there is a lack of trust, people act crazy. And, and also they don't act, they, they just don't make good decisions. And so for, for when you're doing any form of digital marketing, any time you're communicating with someone, the, the check should be, ha, have I generated trust with this person? When you have partners or people on your team, like well, number one, care about their motivations and successes. Like if it's a customer, what motivates a customer to buy from you? What motivates to them to continue to buy from you? Ask people, like live in your customers. I was just, uh, I, I own a company called calendar.com where I was just telling the salesperson, I was like, I want you to live with this, these customers. I want you to understand them, be them, like really get, like really get to know what goes on in their mind. And that needs to be communicated so that we can market, we can communicate in that way. Um, and so right now, to me, salespeople are one of the best researchers that, you know, you have with your communications. Um, introduction and advocating for people. A lot of times this is for partnerships that, you know, you're forming or you have, like really, really look out for people. Send introductions, find joint ventures or, or joint partnerships with people who engage that same customer. Form those good relationships so that you can, once again, look out for each other. This is a world where we kind of need to band together to move forward with. So find good partners, find good people that you can move forward. Gifting and recognizing people. Recognizing people is just something that is just right now I'm trying to do consistently. You know, I, I recently had a bad experience with, um, you know, with a, a, a marketer on, on a team and I communicated it. And one of the things that I remembered when I did that was remember that it's easy to communicate these frustrations because you're frustrated. But, you know, always, always <clears throat> remember to communicate when people do well. So right after that, I spent a good 30 minutes just thinking about the people over the last week that had been easy to deal with, um, customers that had given you know feedback or like I, I looked at a couple that went through our customer care and personally emailed them as the CEO and said, hey, thank you for giving this feedback. A lot of people don't give it and they just like bounce and leave the tool. And I wanted to personalize that to make them feel once again that, that we're recognizing and appreciate the efforts. And I want that to be rewarded. Um, from that, you create these super brand advocates. And if we can, if we do, I think with COVID and what happened here, um, I think that a lot of the best companies stayed alive because of brand advocates, because of those, those people that truly love the company because they stuck with them throughout that time and didn't immediately just cut them because there was no connection. And then lastly, consistent education. This is an important one for me um, just because I think right now um, there's a lack of trust in media and in what information is out there. So it's, it's really important that you do your best as a company to become a true trusted source. When you're pumping out like content, I used to be like, I mean, 10 years ago, I would have said just pump out content because in reality, quantity was the game back then and the content was king if you don't, re you don't remember that. When um, it, then I think it, it evolved into distribution was you know, king slash queen. Um, because uh, people who had so much content out, all that mattered is if you could get them to see it. Now, to me, that next evolution is relevancy. And like, is it relevant and does it truly engage the person? And I think that um, I, I just got involved with the company Relevance.com, where um, the re reason why I, I got involved in the first place, because I think that's this next iteration where, you know, we had content as king, the, the king slash queen, then we had distribution. Now, this next evolution to me is relevancy. And so I, I think it's just going to be key is that are we being relevant with our content? Are we um, getting the relevant people to engage with us? Like that's what's extremely important right now um, to make sure that we're engaging the right people with the right content. 
So with um, with uh, the the last kind of major point I'm going to go over is is this idea of self awareness, and I think this is something that um, before I started Calendar um, or before I started Calendar.com with the, my business partner, we we really thought we were effective. We really thought that we um, uh, you know were pretty eff effective uh, communicators and this and this, and then we started tracking our time and and, and learning a bit more, and we found out we just weren't. Um, you know, I, I, I've actually put a couple of these things as a joke, but it's like, you know, uh, scrapbooking, day drinking, like I, I wasn't actually doing these things, but that's actually what my calendar looked like. There was all these crazy things that I was scheduling and I was, um, you know, it, I, I was in meetings longer than an hour. Look, I had eight meetings longer than one hour when I know I'm not effective after like 45 minutes. I am an entrepreneur. I get distracted easily. And the idea that I had eight one hour meetings in one 30 minute span is nuts. Uh, and sometimes because I need to be absolutely effective with my time. I missed a, uh, you know, a few meetings. And so uh, yeah, I made changes where, you know, relationship for sales, building organic SEO, scheduled time with wife and kids. Um, right now, you know, scheduling that time is, is, you know, not to get all mushy on you guys, but like it's super important for your own mental strength that you're able to schedule and be deliberate with that time with the people you care about right now, because those are, those are people and that, that time is going to help you kind of get through uh, the more demanding professional time because right now we have a very demanding professional time because a lot of companies are in survival mode and so just make sure you're being truly effective if you look i got rid of my more than an hour meetings i rejected more meetings um it really and also i looked at who i was spending time with um i put justin bieber on the bottom even though i, I really don't spend any time at all but you get the point is that people you know and my wife being at the top um you know the self-awareness that goes on, this is so important because at, when we engage people, when we're planning out our time, we want to be truly effective. We want to make ourselves the best version of ourselves. And that and time has a massive effect on how we are as professionals. Um, something, a tactic that I use, if you uh, have ever heard of the term time boxing, a lot of people do this, but they don't know the term. But uh, if you look at this HBR article, um, there's a, uh, I said that there was a, a, a study of a hundred Productivity hacks. Time boxing was ranked as the most useful. I mean, honestly, I, I can back that up without even looking at data. Uh, for me, once I started imp implementing time boxing, where just so you got so you know the kind of definition, at least my definition is when you are allocating certain amounts of time to accomplish tasks and you're planning ahead. And um, for me, it's even scheduling break time. I don't schedule time to relax my brain. My brain's always going, and it get and it results in burnout and me thinking less effectively. So what I would tell you is that schedule the breaks, schedule the, um, you know, the time with a uh, family. Like I, if you look at my uh, calendar nowadays, I legitimately am scheduled from in the morning to at night. Now, am I busy every single moment? No. Some of those are a hey, disconnect from work. Take a, make sure you take a lunch break. I used to never take lunch breaks and I would just always work through, you know, work through those. Now I give myself a little break and it gives myself the permission to, you know, uh, to, to relax your brain so you can come back fully charged. At the same time is that when you when you set goals on accomplishing certain tasks during a certain amount of time, you're, it's proven that you're going to get them done uh, or you're more likely you're going to get them done. And so um, look up uh, there's a, if you type in Prezi uh, time boxing uh, near a wall, the, the, or the uh, author of Indistractable, uh, myself, John Bradshaw with appointment, Tracy Grace, we got together and did um, a video uh, kind of a summary on that. And. Um, it is, is definitely to me one of the most important tactics that you can have as a, um, a an effective pre professional because uh, once again you will accomplish things quicker and in addition you will also give yourself the mental breaks that are much needed in this time. I cannot tell you how important that is as we're in this this digital environment as we things are changing in 2021 we need to get our mental strength up to the best ability so that we can dominate certain areas because there are going to be people there are going to be companies that fail and you do not want your company to be that one 
So this is a quote that I, I mean, that's the thing about life. It is short, precious. Each day is a gift. We should do everything we can to spend our time in the best way possible. I love that quote. I keep it on my desk um, just because time is something we don't give back. It is this last year. There's been a lot of global deaths. There's been a lot of challenges. And so um, really, really be effective with your time. Make it the most make make it the most useful you can possibly ha you, know, you can possibly have and be self-aware of that. So as you, uh, as I promised, uh, this is, I still got one more thing after this, uh, but this is uh, my contact information. I have a LinkedIn newsletter that you guys can check out. Um, it, I keep it up to it about uh, pretty much weekly. And so feel free to connect there. Um, definitely a resource. My book, Top of Mind, I actually have that you know, there and here's a copy of it if you've never seen it before. So check that out as, uh, as well. And then uh, lastly, um, in this world, focus is going to be a, a major priority. Um, and I want you guys to print this out. This is something that um, I, I have on my desk as well, is that there's things that matter and there's things you can control. Um, in your job and in your professional life, I'm telling you there's a lot of things that you cannot control. And you cannot make those things distract you from your overall goals, your priorities, your marketing initiatives, your communication initiatives, and overall business goals. And so keep this at your desk. Fill in the middle and say, like, whenever you're frustrated, like recently there was a problem with a client this week. And it was a big client, one I cared about a lot. And I honestly think, and it did matter to me because I truly cared. But the, the things that were affecting are things that were not in my control. There, there was a lot of um, things that were affecting this relationship that I did not see, couldn't see, and had no idea. And so to me, I've got to let that go. And I've got to focus on the clients, the people, the priorities, where it does overlap, where it is matter, and it's things that I can control. And so keep that at your desk. Um, that is a last parting gift. And, and if there's anything else at all, um, like I said, reach out to me. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys, I'll give you back a little time here um, and just reflect. Um, obviously, you know I value time here. So spend the next couple minutes just really reflecting on any takeaway. I don't care if it's a small takeaway. If you print something like this out or just, or just take away one or two things, uh, do it. And if I can help out in the future, please, please reach out. But thank you for your time. I certainly appreciate the group. Have a good day.